You mentioned several times if you believe in saints. Why do you think that's important? I would say it creates more of a direct connection, let's say just a third party, let's just say, put it that way. Uh, it gives you, you know, a uh, good reference to God, <laughs> let's just put it that way. So I'm studying my master's in governance right now. I did my undergrad here as well in business and marketing. And yeah, I've been here for the past four years now, just having a good time. <laughs> wow, that's a long time, isn't it? So how long are you still here for? Um, indefinite. I'm not planning on moving anywhere. I mean, depends of, on the job opportunities. And, and where do you come from? Romania. It's nice to meet you. We're just making a recording of what people believe about God and their opinion about whether he exists or he doesn't exist and what is it all about. What's your opinion? Do you believe there is a God and he cares and that he exists? Yeah, I do believe there is something um, because th there are a lot of controversial opinions and I just feel like I've always personally myself had uh, some sort of relationship with the divine, if that makes sense. I've always felt it since I was a kid um, and I grew up mainly in the church. I used to go to the church like every Sunday. My family is quite uh, Christian as well. I come from an Orthodox family. So, yeah. That's amazing. So, in your opinion, God does exist and you follow the biblical teaching of the Bible or do you have a different opinion? I would say that the Bible is there as a guide to extract some things from a subjective point of view. Uh, I would say that obviously times have changed and you kind of have to adapt it to our current times and try and, you know, just don't harm anyone, try your best to be a good person and I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> What are the benefits of becoming a Christian? You just lead a better life, is that what it is? Or do you think there are other benefits? I mean, I would say it just like makes you feel like a good person, basically. I don't feel like it, there are any sort of negative implications to it. Um, like, yeah, everyone is entitled to have their own opinion when it comes to their belief, but personally, myself, it just offers a feeling of relief, a feeling of peace, a feeling of, you know, acceptance. and. So, Andrea, if somebody came to you and they said they want to become a Christian, what do you tell them they have to do? What is it they must do to believe, to become Christians? Well, I would say, you know, just try to do your best. Just try and be a good person. Don't hurt anyone if you can. If you do, apologize. Make sure that you help others. Make sure that, you know, if you look into it, because obviously there are multiple in in uh, orthodoxy and Christian orthodox because um, I am a Christian orthodox uh, for example we have multiple saints and uh, for example where I was from uh, the saint of the church that I was baptized in is Saint Mary so um, it's just a matter of it depends if you believe in saints as well and God and depends I would just say look into it do some research maybe read the Bible have your own experience, do some prayers, they always help, or at least they did in my personal case. So, in a minute I'm going to tell you my opinion about Christianity, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. You mentioned several times if you believe in saints. Why do you think that's important? I would say it creates more of a direct connection, let's say just a third party, let's just say, put it that way. Uh, it gives you, you know, a... Uh, good reference to God, <laughs> let's just put it that way. I don't know, I just feel like every single saint, um, personally myself, I'm Andrea, so my name is derivated from Saint Andrews, and I've always felt uh, quite a connection with it. And if you look into Christianity, Saint Andrews um, is the warder of um, evil eye and warder of just bad things, so it keeps you away. Obviously, every single saint has its attributes um, to it, um, but it just depends on personal preference and if you feel personally connected to yeah. a saint, I wouldn't ignore it. Yeah. You know, Adria, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, we have only one mediator between us and God, that we shouldn't put any other mediators. In fact, he's our advocate. 
I'm just wondering how the saints fit in in all this. Can you pray to saints? Can you talk to them? I mean, it depends. It depends. Um, in Orthodoxy, there are plenty of prayers um, in the name of the saints as well. Um, just some sort of, oh, like, help me go through this type of thing. Um, so, Adria, in John chapter 14, Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, yeah. I will do it for you. Yeah. Nowhere in the Bible does it talk about whatever you ask in the name of the saints. So, if Jesus commands us to ask in his name, it sounds like we should really be asking in his name rather than the name of the saints. Would you agree with that? Yeah. 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 So, let me give you one last thought, mm -hmm. and then I'll tell you what I would like to share with you. If you can pray to the saints, if you're able to talk to the saints, that means the saints have got special attributes. For example, in order for a saint to hear your prayer, he's got to have the attribute of being omnipresent because he's got to be everywhere at the same time to hear your prayer and other people's prayers, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. But also, the saint will have to be omniscient. That means the saint needs to know everything in order for him to be able to answer your prayer. And also he's got to be omnipotent, all-powerful, in order for him to be able to answer your prayer in a powerful way, right? Okay. Yeah. But the only being that has the omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresence attribute is God. Yeah. So if somebody else has got those attributes, that person will be God. That's why we can pray to Jesus, because we believe Jesus is God. But if you give the same attributes to the saints, then the saints will become our gods. Can you hear the problem? Yeah. 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 So praying to saints doesn't sound like a wise thing to do, especially in view of what the Bible tells us we should do. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'd like to encourage you to think about that. Because the moment we pray to somebody, pray to somebody not for them, but pray to somebody, that means we're putting them in place of God. And that will be not a wise thing to do, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, you mentioned several times that being a Christian makes you a good person. Now, would you say you're a good person? I mean, I'm trying to be. I've never... You know, I feel like everyone's, everyone has their own battles they're going through every day. And as long as you try your best yeah. to be a good person, I don't think there's anything. And you try your best, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, we're going to use the Bible to find out whether you're a good person. Are you, is that okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it, go for it. We're going to use the Old Testament, which is the Ten Commandments. Yeah. That's God's standard of goodness. You know, it says you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't blaspheme, that sort of thing, yeah? Yeah. Okay. How many lies have you told... Andrea, since you were young? Oh, I... I don't know. I try my best not to break any sort of the rules, the main rules, let's just put it that way. Um, I would say that, you know, like, maybe I lied here and there when I was a kid, um, but I try my best not to. I actually... If, if someone does that to me, or if I do, I just got a connection with that person because I feel like neither they deserve it or I deserve it. Yeah. So I just it just stands against my morals. I like that. So you try your best not to lie. That means sometimes you do to get yourself out of trouble, that sort of thing. Sometimes, I would say, but not... It, it's not really out of trouble. It's maybe like not to offend someone. Like, for example, I don't know. Let's say someone asks me, oh, uh, what do you think of this? Like, I'll just say, oh, I'm not really like too keen on the subject, maybe, but try not to expose my opinion too brutally. You're trying to be kind. Yeah. I don't mean that kind. I mean, like, sometimes to get yourself, you know, they say your mom or your dad says, have you been to that party to get you out of trouble? You say, no, I've never been there. Or you, you do some things that to get yourself out of trouble. No, not really. And the, or the teacher says, have you cheated on that exam? And you say, no, I haven't. But actually, you looked at the next guy's answers, that sort of thing. No, I try to be honest as much as I can. As much as you can. Yeah. When somebody says as much as I can, it means that sometimes they don't. <laughs> Yeah, I want to say that maybe like once in a while, okay. but I don't have a particular I like topic or like a particular yes. environment. I, I understand. So if somebody comes to us and they lie to us, we get offended and we call them a name. What do we call them? We say, you are a... Liar. That's it. <laughs> have you ever taken something that's not yours in your entire life? Since you were young, the value doesn't matter. I don't think so, no. 
I don't, not that I'm aware of. Okay. So I'm going to help you out to make sure that you understand what stealing means. If you download music off the internet when you should be paying for it, that would be stealing, right? I guess, yeah. And Or if you watch a movie that's pirated movie, that means it's a copy that you should be paying for, but instead of paying for it, you actually watched it free, that would be stealing, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, if you go to work and not do the full hours you're supposed to do, that would be stealing from, from the, from the yeah. company. Yeah. If you cheat on an exam, look at somebody else's answers, that would be stealing, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, would you say you're guilty at least once of any one of those things? Yeah, I would say the movies part, definitely. Movie. <laughs> yes. Okay, fair enough. Thank you for being honest with me. By the way, I didn't pass this test, so you're... <laughs> And I'm not judging you. No, it's okay. it's okay. I'm going to do two more of the Ten Commandments and see how well you do. Go for it, go for it. Now, you said you believe in God. Yeah. Have you ever used this name in vain? Do you know what that means? Yeah. yeah. You say, oh, my G-O-D, when you're angry or when you're surprised. Instead of using a swear word, you use, you know, say, oh, Jesus or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, not that I can think of. Not that I can think of. Sometimes we do it without knowing, don't we? Because that's yeah. what it in vain means. You say, oh my, and then you say it. It doesn't even cross your mind that you said it because you're not thinking about it, right? Yeah. And that's what blasphemy is. Blasphemy is to carelessly use God's name in an irreverent way, without worship, without thinking about it. Yeah. So if you've done that, that will be that you're guilty of it. But you can't remember it, so you may or may not have done that. Yeah. 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 Since you were young, of course, yeah? Yeah. You don't know? Maybe. Next time pay attention if you do yeah. it because it's important. Obviously, yeah. obviously. Okay, one last one. Have you always obeyed your parents? That's commandment number five. Obeyed what they said, honored them, listened to what they said? No. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> um, I would say that um, when it comes to my parents, is. Um, it depends on what sort of... I kept their opinion into consideration, but since I became an adult, I am trying to make my own judgment and weigh it and balance it in my own sort of way and uh, take their advice. But if I consider that there's something that I should be doing that not necessarily disregarding, but doesn't really agree with their opinion. So let's say they say that, oh, you should buy this tomato and I'm buying an orange or something. You know, it's just my personal opinion by I always try and get their opinion into consideration well done well done you're trying to be a good child a godly person who obeys the parents and yeah. do what they say and honor them that's fantastic mm -hmm. so we're gonna do a quick summary and then we're gonna come to the end yeah, by your own admission Andrea you have told me that you have lied sometimes yeah. uh, you have taken things that are not yours that will make you a lying, thieving, and some blaspheming you're not sure about, you may or may not have done it, because that's the nature of using God's name in vain, you don't even think about it. And then finally you said you have not always honored your parents, which means that you've been disrespectful or rebellion. Yeah. So, if God were to judge you by this standard, and you appear before God on Judgment Day, and He knows everything that you've done in secret and in your heart, yeah. would you come out innocent or guilty of breaking the Ten Commandments? So far we've done four, yeah. uh, there's another six pointing at you and myself. Yeah. Innocent or guilty so far? Uh, perhaps guilty. Perhaps Definitely. Guilty. <laughs> perhaps, guilty. perhaps guilty. Now tell me something. Yeah. If God was just and he cares about right and wrong and he wants to make sure that guilty people don't go unpunished, what would he do with the person who's guilty? Would he reward them by sending them to heaven or would he punish them by sending them to his prison he calls hell? Where would that be? You have to be honest. This is extra, extra honest. Yeah. I would say that he would definitely not send me to heaven. <laughs> that's right. Which will concern you if that's true, right? Because you don't want to go to hell, do you? No, I don't. But in the same time, I believe that my intentions are pure most of the times and humans are flawed. Yeah. So let me tell you something about our intentions. The Bible says our hearts are wicked above all things. So God knows your heart and he knows my heart. And he also says that he will reject the proud and he will give grace to the humble. So we're going to be humble now. So we're going to be humble because I'm about to give you the answer and you need to receive it in a humble heart. Are you ready? Because this is going to show you something about Christianity that you probably didn't think about. 
It is possible that in your church they spoke about this, but you may have not heard it properly. So I want you to be very aware of this. So this is important. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. So you and I are guilty. And if God gives us what we deserve, we'll go to hell. And that will be a just thing to do. In fact, if God sends us to heaven, he'll be a corrupt judge. And that means heaven will be a bad place because heaven will be led by a corrupt judge. So that's not going to happen. You and I are guaranteed to face God on judgment day and end up in hell because we broke his laws and violated his commandments. Make sense so far? Yeah. But God also loves us and his love is as great as his justice. That means he can't overlook his love in the same way as he can't overlook his justice. So there's a dilemma. So how does God uphold his justice and uphold his mercy at the same time? So this is what he does, Andrea. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. He comes down himself in the person of Jesus 2,000 years ago. And he voluntarily lays his life for you, lays down his life for you and for me, and dies a horrible death on the cross and rose again on the third day to show he's got power over death and hell and sin forever. And now when you appear before him, Andrea, he can let you go free, not because you're good, but because God paid the fine on your behalf. You see, there was a legal transaction that took place that most people don't recognize and don't really know. And this legal transaction is that God gave you his righteousness or his perfection. So that when God looks at you, he doesn't see sinful Andrea, but he sees perfect Jesus. And when he looks at Jesus, he sees you and he pours out his wrath on him instead of you. Can you see that? Yeah. And that's why he's our advocate. He steps in, in the courtroom, on our behalf, and he says, Andrea is guilty, but I paid the fine for her. Do you see how merciful and loving God is? Yeah. So it wasn't the saint that stepped in for yeah. you. It wasn't some other person that stepped in for you. God himself stepped in for you. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Okay. There's something you and I must do in order to receive this free gift that we do not deserve. We need to do two things. Earlier I said, what do you have to do? And you said, well, you just got to follow the Bible and be as good a person as you can. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that you need to repent. You probably heard of the word repent before. Yeah. 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 Repent means you have a change of mind, change of heart. You turn away from those things that offend God. Yeah. That's number one. But it does not save anybody. Because it's like a guilty person appearing before a judge who's a criminal and he says, I'm sorry. And he says, you should be sorry because what you did is bad. But that doesn't mean he doesn't go to prison. What saves this person from hell is putting their trust, their confidence, and not them themselves by being a good person or thinking they are when they're not, but by putting their trust entirely in the work that Jesus did on the cross that rescues them from the predicament they're in, rescues them from hell. Do you get it? So Jesus saves us from hell. So we need to do two things. Can you remember? It was repentance and faith. We repent and we put our trust in Jesus. Yeah. Now tell me, Adria, if we don't repent and put our trust in Jesus, where are we guaranteed to go the moment we die? Hell. <laughs> the way to avoid it is to do two things, which are? Repent and faith. Make sense, Adria? Yeah, it does. That's the Christian message. This is what God came to do. He didn't come just to give us a life that's full of joy and peace. That comes after we reconcile with the God who's angry with us because we violated God's laws and commandments. We are criminals. Yeah. We need to repent and put our faith. When will you do that, Andrea? Be honest with me. Well, I have been trying to do it. Um, I can't say that I'm fully succeeding, but you know, the faith was always there for me. That's, that was never a doubt. Yes. Um, you see, let me clarify. When we say faith, there is a danger of me trying to convince you that God exists. I'm not saying have belief in God's existence because that should come without saying. That is a fact. But believing in God doesn't save anybody. Even Satan will end up in hell, even though he believes in God. Yeah. And there are a lot of people out there who believe in a creator, but that's not going to help them. What they need is a savior. Can you hear why Jesus is the savior? Yeah. Okay. So when will you put your trust and confidence in the work that Jesus did fully, everything, 100%, when will you do that in order for you to receive this eternal life? Remember, you're not doing anything. You're just, you're just acknowledging that you are sinful and you're acknowledging what Jesus did for you. When can you do that? I mean, I have been acknowledging it for a while now. Um, I'm not, obviously, I'm not perfect. I never said I was. That's why you do need Jesus, because we're not perfect. Yeah, yeah. 
So, can I ask you to think about it, Andrea? Yeah. Can I can I encourage you to repent and put your trust in Jesus? As a matter of fact, the moment we finish, you walk away, not even a second will go by before you put your entire confidence in Jesus. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean when the moment you do that, there's perfect Andrea here, no. What that means is that you acknowledge you're not perfect and that's why you need a savior. And he will help you. The Holy Spirit will live in you and he will help you to walk according to his will as much as possible, but the Holy Spirit will help you through it. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much, Andrea. Do you have a Bible at home? Yeah. Okay. Can you promise me you'll start reading it and obey what it says? Of course. Of course. Do you go to church? Yeah. I do. You do? Okay, good. Well, I want to encourage you to continue in that walk, and I want to thank you for your time. No worries. Thank you so much. Was this helpful to you? Yeah, of course. Thank that you. That will sharpen you to realize what God has done for you, yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Put it here. Thank you so much for your time.